What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for an episode review of the new season of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode one, Hot Girl Summer. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was good, okay? Starting off the new season of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I know I didn't review it last season. That's because I didn't have my channel last season. But thank God to you. Lucky you. I got my channel and I will be uh, bringing the review to you every Monday. This episode was good because it was just basically introducing everybody. Introducing a couple of new people. But definitely bringing back the same old messy people that we know and that we love. But um, yeah, it was good, y'all. So, um... I'm ready. You ready? Let's go ahead and get on into this review. <sighs> Y'all, so surprise, surprise, the episode starts off with flashes of you know, tabloids of Fizz and April. Are they together? Are they not together? We seen them here with this and we heard about this. Then you see a slow-mo of them walking together. They grab hands. They hug, they kiss. You see some clips where she's sitting on his lap and they all hugged up this, that, and the other. What we already knew is what they done finally confirmed is that, yes, Fizz and April are together. Now, after they started showing clips of, you know, all this random shit, then the screen split and it said four months earlier. Now... Fizz is in the gym with J Bug and Spectacular because you know they out on the Millennium Tour right now, whatever, right? So they in the gym trying to get their sexy and get their stamina back. Cause they said it's been 15 years since their ass had been on stage. So when they finally got on stage, these motherfuckers damn near passed out. They was huffing and puffing and they was damn near dying. So they had to get in the gym because they didn't they didn't want to be embarrassing themselves out here on these streets with these, you know, these youngins trying to come at them and they like, oh, I got bad knees and a bad back and I ain't I can't got you know, I can't hang like I used to or whatever, right? So they in the gym, they working out or whatever. Spectacular asks um, Fizz and Jay Bug, how's everything going with the group? Because, you know, as we all know, not everybody in y'all's group got along just like not everybody in Pretty Ricky got along. So how's everything going with y'all? Now, Fizz says that him and Raz B share the same tour bus, but they do not talk. Fizz say he stays in the back with the door closed doing his little thing that he do. Raz stays in the front, minds his own business. He says that they don't communicate. He says he never knows how Raz is going to be, whether he's going to be cool one minute, whether he's going to go off the next minute. Now, as far as him and Omarion, he said they've always been business partners. Now, they were cool at one point in time. Um, he said now about five or six years ago, they fell off completely. I don't know if they were trying to, like, revamp the group up, but um, um, Fizz says something about Omarion. Um, decided to do a single and he do see one off and left again and so they really fell out from that it's been five or six years and they haven't communicated since then so jay bug asked you know so what is this going on you know because i've been seeing all over social media that your baby mama and omarion baby mama are like getting into it and there's rumors about you and april being together now fizz is like you know um I'm, April and I are just good friends right now. Ain't nothing going on. Nothing is permanent. But if something is permanent, that'll definitely be a conversation that I'll have with him. But besides the fact of that, you know, Omarion has never said anything to me about it. You know, we're just business partners. We're together on the tour. And he has yet to say anything to me about it. So, I mean, but this is my thing. If you know you fucking this man's baby mama, why won't you just say something to him? Why won't you be like, hey, you know, it's a big elephant in the room, yada, yada, yada. Why do you have to wait for him to come and say something to you? You obviously must know something's wrong with it. I'm just saying I'm going to shut the hell up about that. But... So, like I said, he says that Omarion ain't tried to come and talk to him, but when the opportunity does present itself to where he needs to let Omarion know that something is permanent, then he'll let him know. Y'all, ooh-wee. Now, at that same time, 
April is like walking through a courtroom or whatever. She's saying that, you know, she, you know, they're doing her little introductory, uh, introduction of her or whatever, right? She's saying that she's steady in the courts, in and out of the courts, getting into it with Omarion over their kids. Whether it be custody, whether it be rights, this, that, and the other, she's steady in and out the court. Now, she's now on the beach talking with Keisha Cole, oh, fine ass baby daddy, booby, booby, whoo, he fine as hell. So, she's on to be, April always with somebody, baby, let me shut up, let me shut up. Anyways, so she's on the beach talking with Booby or whatever, and so she's telling Booby, you know, how she's in and out of the courts over, you know, just baby daddy drama. And so Booby's like, you know, me and you are similar because I've been going through the same shit, trying to hint around at Keisha Cole being Patty. Stop talking about my bitch Keisha. She ain't here to defend herself. Now, later on, April is at the radio station because at this point in time, she was working at the radio station with Jason Lee. Whatever the name of his radio podcast, whatever it is, I don't know. I'll put the information down in the, in the link description, below, uh, description box below because I can't think of it right now. Anyways, she was over there at the station with them. They were taking pictures whatever, right? Now... Fizz comes and pops up while she's over there at the radio station, whatever, right? And so Jason was kind of like, oh, you know, hey, you know, hey, good to see you, bro. What's going on? You know, what's, 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 what's this? What's going on? I see your, your baby mama is all um, on live and getting into it, all this and the other. And so they were telling Jason about the, the drama that was going on right then at that point in time with April and Moniece. Now, I guess what happened, if you watch... Um, Whatever, like I said, I'll put his information to whatever his stuff is, the, the, the radio station. I'll put it down in the description box below. Because there was an interview that he had did with Monice, and baby Monice was spilling all kinds of goddamn tea, okay? Well, she was saying that they were getting into it because I guess it was her weekend to spend with her son, and... Um, April had talked Fizz into coming to Chicago. Fizz took their son with them, and so there was just this big old fiasco from there whatever right and so she's in this like i said they're talking with jason about that right and so jason asked okay so what's going on with y'all two because it's obvious that there's something going on between the two of y'all why don't y'all just spill the beans and just you know say what's popping you know what i'm saying april asked well, there's nothing going on right now if we do decide that we want to make something permanent because, yes, it is a possibility that, yes, we could fuck around. I mean, we're two beautiful people. I mean, yes, it is a possibility. Then you will definitely be the first to know. Like, April, girl, you ain't heard of keeping some shit to yourself. Like, if that wasn't no more obvious that y'all was fucking, I don't know what was. Let me see. I said I wasn't going to cuss so much. If that wasn't obvious that y'all was goosing, then I don't know what was. But y'all, I mean, at this point, when I started to see that, I started to get irritated. Let me tell you why. Because at this point, I know you lying to me. I know you lying to me, and, and I don't like it. And so, I don't want to hear nothing you say. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But it was just really getting on my nerves. And so... Lord, that was four months earlier. So, again, you the cat's out of the bag. Y'all goosing. It is what it is. Who, y'all? Ray J and Princess. Now, Princess and Ray J's little girl, Melody Love Norwood, is so damn cute. She is so cute. She looks like a baby doll. She looks like a perfect little baby doll. She is so cute. Well, it shows them Ray J sleeping on the couch because he was saying, and what he was saying made a lot of sense. You know, me and my husband were saying this. When you have kids, you so focused especially when you're married and when you have kids, you so focused on trying to be like the perfect parent and trying to make sure you're doing everything right as a parent. You forget about the mofo you made the baby with. And so sometimes, you know, shit just kind of goes by the wayside and all you focus on is the kid, right? And so that's what Ray J was saying that, you know, the kind of slump that him and um, Princess were in right now to where they just basically, they just, it's all about baby Melody and she's so damn cute. It needs to be all about it. She's so damn cute. Well, child, this is what got me later on in the episode, right? Princess tells Ray J to meet her at an undisclosed location, right? Some old underground Electra Abundance S&M 
little dungeon-esque candy ju dungeon type place, right? Come to find out, it is like some old s &M place where she got the motherfucker, she got the mofo tied and bound and got a leather pig mask on his face, make him take off his clothes, baby. Now, y'all know Ray J body used to be like, whew, back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And I love a big belly myself. I love a big belly man. That's just me. But, child, when Ray J took off his clothes and he had on them tight-ass jockey shorts and he was setting his ass on that table, son, how much did they pay you to do that, son? That was not a good look, son, for real. Y'all, I was looking at Ray J like, Ray J, boy, if you don't try, at one point in time, he was sitting on the table, let me tell y'all, his stomach was touching his thighs, but his little thing was still poking out the middle, so baby, it was kind of like, it was like a surprise, because all you could see was just the blackness of the skin, and then this little turtle head, I mean, not, you couldn't see the turtle head, but you could just see all this in the middle, I was like, son, Y'all could have kept that whole little old scene. You know what I'm saying? But it was cute. You know what I'm saying? They trying to get their sexy back or whatever. Move right along from that. Y'all, K. Michelle, Lord have mercy. Now, let me give it to you. Okay, K. Michelle looked good. She got all of that extra silicone and fix a flat and fondue or whatever that was she had all back there in her ass. She got it all sucked out. Now she looks good. She does not look like a cartoon character. She looks beautiful. She looks absolutely beautiful, right? And so she's out looking for a house. Um, later on, she ends up meeting with her surrogate. She picks up her surrogate from the airport. Now, as we all know, K. Michelle been saying that she wanted to have another baby. She just don't want to have it herself. You know what I'm saying? And plus, like she said, her body having to go through so much surgery. I think she said she had to get eight surgeries all last year. So her body couldn't take her, you know, actually going through with the pregnancy. So she picks her surrogate up from the airport. Now, the surrogate... Homegirl already had a lot going on on her plate. Looked like she already had triplets, three little girls, plus a little boy. So the bitch, I mean, homegirl ain't new to having no kids. She ain't new to this. She true to this. She done been popping out babies left and right. Now, K. Michelle is saying she wants twin girls. Girl, no, but all that, child. I mean, it, it's cute. It would be cute, you know, and she definitely could afford to do it. But, girl, that's a lot. They were sitting in the car, and little mama that was sitting in between them, child, she was having a whole goddamn meltdown. Ooh, my ovaries started hurting. I was like, look. That's my birth control right there. I ain't having no more goddamn kids. But that was cute or whatever. We're going to see what, you know, happens with that. Hopefully, she does have her twin babies that she wants. Yay, K. Michelle. But she did look good, though. I got to give you that. K. Michelle, she looked good. You looked blessed. Like Kendall Kendall was saying. <laughs> Y'all, so real quick, some new chick that they introduced, her name is Brittany B. She's some artist. I don't know who she is, although she was dropping like 50 million 1100 names of artists that she done worked with before. Now she's working with Black China. Now, if you follow my review for The Real Black China, I just uploaded that episode last night. You can go back and watch a review for um, episode one, two, three, and four on my channel. But, um, you already know that Black China want to be a rapper. Now, again, that was all new to me. I never knew that she had aspiring dreams of being an, uh, a rapper. But this chick, Britney B, is supposed to help her try to get her career off the map, y'all. Black China, I'm going to need you to stick to your strengths. Your strengths is having a big ass, rocking the hell out some clothes, bumping the shit out of a lace front, and just sitting there looking cute. Now, rapping, girl, I don't really know if that's your niche. I don't know, but you could pleasant, pleasantly surprise me. I'm looking forward to being surprised. 
But y'all, that was them. Move right along from Y'all saw A1 and his perfect pearls and his perfect pedicure with the perfect lacra met with Ray J and they went on a daddy, um, like a, a daddy date or whatever, right, in the park. And so A1 was telling Ray J about how um, Lyrica left. She been gone for about 10 days. She got pissed off because bitches were studying her DMs about what her husband is doing. And so she been off and she left. She been gone for about 10 days. Now... Her baby brand new as hell. Like, he still got the newborn bobblehead. Like, he can't even hold his head up straight. Ain't no way I would have left my baby for no 10 goddamn days, even if I am mad at his dumb ass daddy. I'm still not going to leave my baby for no 10 damn days. That's just me. I don't know if it was exaggerated for the, for the TV show or whatever, but he says that she's been gone for 10 days and that he doesn't know where she is, ain't heard from her, none of that or whatever, right? So... Later on, A1 is in the studio because he says that he got an opportunity to go on tour with T-Pain or whatever, right? So he's in the studio preparing some lyrics, you know what I'm saying? He's putting it down. Jason Lee pops up on him at the studio. Now, Jason Lee, of course, you, you know, we all know Jason Lee is messy as fuck, and when he come, he come with some receipts. He came with some receipts from Summer Bunny. Now, if you're all into the blogs, like moi am, Summer Bunny had recorded herself on FaceTime with A1. A1 was telling her to pull up. Or she was saying she was finna go to the house and he was gonna pull up over there. Either way it goes, somebody was gonna pull up some goddamn way, right? Now, Jason has the information. He's bringing it to A1 so A1 can tell Lyrica basically so he can get ahead of it before he goes and exposes it. Now that shows you what kind of friend Jason Lee is. Yes, he still has a job that he has to do, but that's your homeboy. Um, I guess you can say he's your friend because he came and let you know the gossip he's going to put out about your marriage to jeopardize your marriage. I mean, I guess. A1 got pissed, y'all. A1 told him, hey, look, I'm telling you, don't put that out. A1 told him, I don't want to have to turn up. Oh, Lord, not turn up. I don't want to see you turn up neither. You don't want to mess up them pearls and them nails, baby. Don't do that. So Jason basically tells him, I'll pray on it. He tells the nigga, I'll pray on it. I'll pray on whether or not I'm going to drop some gossip about you and your family that could fuck up your marriage. I'll pray on it. That's some hoe ass shit. Now, Lyrica's at the airport, right? Her mom comes and picks her up from the airport because I guess she's back from her stay, stay awaycation or whatever that she was when she was pissed off at A1 or whatever, right? And so she's telling her mom about, you know, the shit that A1 was doing about, you know, these girls being all in his DMs. Now, she doesn't quite yet know about this information that Jason has, right? So, she says she's happy to be home. She's happy to see her baby. But she's not happy to have to go home and face A1 and have this conversation with him about the, sh the shit these girls were sending in her DMs or whatever, right? So, she gets home. Her and A1 argue, yada, yada, yada. Now, our, now A1 is saying in his green screen that right now might not be the time for him to tell Lyrica about the information that Jason has about him. Hopefully, Jason will still give him some time so that he can, you know, be able to tell Lyrica about what's going on or whatever, right? Split screen, next day, Jason and drop the information. It's all over the blogs, all over social media. This exchange between him and Summer Bunny, yada, 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 right? So, Lyrica once again gets pissed and she leaves. So, at this point, I don't know if a few days or whatever passed, a1 ends up going on this tour, whatever, that he's going on with T-Pain. Lyrica comes back to the house. A1 isn't there. He's gone. So she's like, okay, well, what the fuck is going on? Because by at this point, she done found out about the shit that's been going on because now it's all over the blogs, right? She calls up A1. A1 is like, oh, yeah, I had to leave. I had to go on tour. Now, mind you, the motherfucker hurry up and got out of there so that he wouldn't have to face Lyrica about this information that just been brought out in the blogs. So she's like, okay, so what is this shit about? you facetiming bitches and yada 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 he gonna tell her we'll talk about it when i get back from tour nigga what couldn't be my husband couldn't be my husband because i'd have found his ass i'd have found him whatever the hell he was and i'd have hurt him I, yes i said it i'd have hurt him ain't no damn way ain't no damn way you, ain't no damn way so y'all 
I'm anxious to see what happens after that because, um, yeah, he made sure he hurry up and got his coward ass up out the house so that he didn't have to face her when she found out about this damn news. Y'all, he pissed me off with that. But anyways, the episode ends with Monice meeting up with April. Now, April claims that um, she can't stand girls that are all bark and no bite. Bitch, have you met Monique Slaughter? I have never met her in real life. I've only known her in the seven to ten years that she's been on reality TV. And the bitch ain't scared of shit. She ain't scared to bark or bite your goddamn ass. So they supposed to be meeting up face to face and finally talking as opposed to them arguing back and forth like they had been doing on live. They always arguing on live. But the episode ended there, y'all. It's going to be a lot going on. A lot going on this season. I will make sure to bring the review to you every Monday night. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode, y'all. It was really, really good. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.